ice, palm, and a sparkling water. All right, here is the full lunch today. It's pregnancy brain. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the core has the best nutrients. I could leave this out and tell you I had no sugar whatsoever, but we did sacrifice a virgin on the third night of the full meal, didn't we? Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing super, super duper well. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you all through what I ate and drank during the two week wait after our second embryo transfer that ultimately ended up leading to our positive pregnancy test. If you all are new here, hello, my name is Mac Dingle. My husband, Jack and I were on a three year infertility journey. What a ride that was. And we vlogged everything except Extensively, so I will leave that playlist link down below in case you all are still in the thick of it and any of those vlogs would be helpful for you. But if you have gotten all the way to your embryo transfer, first of all, congratulations. I know how freaking difficult the road has been to get there and how hard you have worked. So pat yourself on the back. You made it this far and that is just incredible. <laughs> and hopefully this video is helpful and gives you guys some ideas of things you might want to introduce into your meals during this excruciating wait that is the two week wait. First, I'm going to show you the vlog footage I have of the meals that I was eating and the drinks that I was drinking during this time. And then I'll come back and maybe sprinkle in some other things that I was doing or not doing during this time. Now, do I think that the food I was eating and the drinks that I was drinking is what led to my positive pregnancy test? Yes, absolutely. It is scientifically 100% proven that the things that I was eating and drinking led to my positive pregnancy. No, <laughs> no, you guys. No, 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 no. There's absolutely no way that I can point to these meals and the foods that I introduced as the thing that helped with this second embryo transfer after our first one failed. But for me, during a process and a waiting period where it feels like I have zero control over everything, choosing the specific foods and nutrients that I introduced into my diet just made me feel feel like I was sort of in control of something when I felt like I had absolutely no control whatsoever. So at most, I just hope this video gives you inspiration if you're looking for the same thing. And without further ado, let's start with breakfast and I will see you at the end of the video. The lunch that I'm having this week, I think I'm having the same lunch. Yes, I'm having the same lunch every day. I like a smorgasbord of flavors. So the things that I chose for breakfast have some variety in them. Like there's just a lot going on between the egg and the avocado and the toast, like different things. And for lunch, I looked at all of the like recommended types of food related to implantation, fertility, etc. And so I landed on some cooked up salmon. Jack is frying it up for me in a pan. And then, ooh, with butter. And then in the oven, we're cooking up two big sweet potatoes. One is for Jack, one is for me. I'll probably have like half of it because it's a massive sweet potato. And then I'm also going to make myself almost like a side mini salad. So I've got some spring mix, which has the leafy greens in it. I've got bell pepper, cucumber, I think I might sprinkle some just like shredded cheese on top because I can't have a salad without cheese. That's like a crime. And then I also got sunflower seeds 
to go in the salad as well. I'm just gonna, oh, and tomatoes. <laughs> I keep forgetting like everything. But lots of good fresh vegetables, deep greens, and sunflower seeds were on a lot of lists when I was looking at food. Those are kind of the three things I am having for lunch. And there's just a lot of different types of nutrients that will be delicious for it. What I'm really looking forward to, and I haven't gotten to it yet, is um, this little number ripening so that I can particularly use its core for pineapple core tea. Kind of excited about that. Wanna wanna drink that, it's kind of a tradition, but also someone I see on TikTok could have something to do with it, could not, but she drank that every morning and now she's pregnant with twins. Thank you, baby. That looks deep lich. Is it clean? Yeah, clean it in between. Yes, why am I putting that up? Yeah, what's going on there? I don't know what's happening. What is going on with uh, the drawer? It's pregnancy brain. Oh my gosh, it's <laughs> happening. chosen this light balsamic vinaigrette, just something super simple. And I love balsamic. It's kind of one of my favorite dressings to put on salads. Here we have it in the salad. It was spring mix, uh, bell pepper, color of your choice, cucumber tomatoes, sunflower seeds, balsamic. I ended up not going with cheese because randomly I felt like maybe it didn't need it. And then this piece of salmon, and I think this is gonna fill me for now. And then I'm thinking the sweet potato will be a mid-afternoon snack because I always end up needing one. And if I'm not hungry for it right now, I'll just save it for my snack. All right, friends, we have made it to dinner. And for this week, we are still doing HelloFresh, but we picked recipes that have like a good amount of protein in them or some sort of protein veggie type of thing. I don't think we chose like a pasta this week, like a creamy pasta, which we usually do like to have. But today's is a pork tostada recipe and it looks fire. We've got onions and peppers that cook on a pan the tostada is heated up in the oven, the tortillas did, and then we've got a onion and tomato pico on top with a crema, and then I have this taco sauce that I'm gonna drizzle on. Uh, it's pico de gallo. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um. I made the pico, so I am de gallo. You are de guy. I'm de gallo. The dinners weren't necessarily picked for fertility reasons. I'm getting a lot of the nutrients and stuff in my breakfast and lunch and my snacks. Like I'm gonna make mm. my special drink later tonight and I'm making sure to eat some pineapple and the core for the pineapple that I got from the store should be ready maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, so I'll start sipping that tea tomorrow, which I'm excited about. All right, friends, it is about time for my special nightly drink. I have ice, palm, and a sparkling water. My favorite special drink is with a like zero soda. So zero Sprite or zero ginger ale is really good, but even if it's zero, it still has like sodium in it and stuff. And so I'll do that sometimes. Normally I got a special glass straw, but tonight we're going that way. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Tonight I have a pineapple passion fruit. Delish. And then this is a what I eat in a week during the two week wait. And you gotta treat yourself. I could leave this out and tell you I had no sugar whatsoever during my two week wait, but here it is. This is the ice cream cake that Jack got me the night of the transfer and it says pass pregnant and staying pregnant. I think I got the P or part of the P in this one. So yesterday I didn't end up eating my sweet potato because I was full, but today I am absolutely 
starving. That is not abnormal for me, so I'm not counting it as any sign or anything like that. Just wanted to show you guys, I have these spears of pineapple that I got. I'm eating a couple of these a day while I wait for the pineapple over there to ripen, but the pineapple looks pretty good. So I think we're going to cut into her today. And then not only will I have some more fresh pineapple to snack on, but I'll have the core to make the tea, and I'm excited about that. But right now, Jack is cooking up my fillets of salmon. There's like five in there. I'll only have three by the end of the week. Maybe I'll freeze the other two, or the cats will get a really delicious dinner. Honestly, this isn't like, I would say nutritionally different than the stuff that I eat regularly. It's just substituting a few things or like switching out some stuff to make sure I'm getting the specific nutrients that tend to aid in fertility and hormones. But I'd overall say I'm eating the same amount, if not a little more, to make sure I'm getting in all the goodies, you know? Mm -mm -mm. And honestly, I'm not complaining. All right, here is the full lunch today. Freaking love the colors we've got going on. So it doesn't look as appetizing as it did coming out of the oven, but I mashed up the sweet potato with just a little bit of butter on each side. And then Jack prepared some lemon pepper salmon. And then what's on this one, Bubba? Our homemade Mediterranean. It's like a Mediterranean seasoning blend. So that's over there. And then the salad is the same as yesterday. I did some mozzarella shredded cheese on top today. So we're looking fly, friends. This looks so good. All right, tonight on the menu is bruffer. That's what we call it. Brinner, bruffer, whatever you call it. When it comes to HelloFresh, we only get four meals a week because we do this thing called wine stay. And in the middle of the week, we either go out or we get taken out and treat ourselves a little bit but this time we were just really feeling breakfast at home so that's what we're having there's nothing necessarily fertility special about dinners this week but I'm just trying to up my protein really like I said before the nutrients and the change-ups are more so in my breakfast and lunch and snacks and drinks type of thing you know but Jack's got the bacon sizzling hard over here. We got pancakes because we're doing kind of a grand slam situation. And we did opt for the Kodiak pancakes because they had more protein. We froze one of Jack's um, loaves of bread that he made the other weekend. And so I'm having a couple pieces of sourdough. And then after we're done with the bacon and the pancakes on the stove, we're just gonna cook up a couple eggs really quick. So it really is gonna be an entire breakfast schmuck board and Jack's even making whipped cream right now <laughs> homemade whipped cream we're going absolutely ham and what is the occasion you may ask we have the early access for Harry Potter and we have a playing date with Ilya on FaceTime Skype wherever we can just call him and we can all just play it for the first time together and that is going to be a uh, we're so excited, so excited. And just like that, friends, the Grand Slam is served. Pancakes separate so I can douse them in syrup with eggs, bacon, and toast. Good morning, friends. Hey, good morning. Hi, I don't know we were, know we were doing this. What's going on? I am showing them the pineapple core oh, tea. Nice. So Jack just graciously chopped up the pineapple that we had. We've got the actual pineapple as a snack in this little container. And then, now, I have never done this before in my life, but I am going to chop up the core into little chunks like this. I'm literally just doing what I saw this girl on TikTok do. Can you get me down the blender? Yeah. I've got my chunks. I'm gonna put all the core into my ninja bottle. I don't know what you call it. Apparently, the core has the best nutrients that we want out of the pineapple, like the highest concentrated amount. And then I'm just gonna grab some water. The girl didn't really say how much, but you can see the water kind of covering the pineapple. Oh, wait, I forgot almost the most important part. She put a dash of cinnamon into hers. So I'm gonna do a dash of cinnamon in mine. And I'm gonna just blend her up. All right, I double checked 
what she did next. And basically with this, and it'll naturally separate because it's just pineapple and water, cinnamon. She takes, oh gosh, I'm getting one of the pouring bottles for the tops. But she takes a little bit of this directly into a mug and then she pours hot water. But I already have hot water in this mug because we like to pour like some of the boiling water that we use for our coffee in the mornings in here. So I'm just gonna use that. And she drinks it like a tea on an empty stomach in the morning. And I haven't eaten yet, so this is perfect. All right, taste test. I wouldn't say it's good. Hmm, I actually think it is pretty good. I just, I just can't say that I have drank pineapple tea before, you know? Mine is much more herbal, usually. Yeah, it's nice. The cinnamon's really good, too. Wanna try my fertility? Yeah, sure, how's that? That looks good. You're here drinking homemade pineapple tea and I'm getting you like ice cream cake and... <laughs> Ooh, it smells great. I mean, the taste is fine. What throws me is the fact that it's like a hot, smoothie. Yeah. I will definitely be drinking this. And then this morning we've got oatmeal because we had um, eggs and brinner last night. So that looks good. Thank you, baby. I didn't feel like my eggs and toast this morning. This is the situation. Some oatmeal, some pineapple core tea, my medicine, and then that's Jack's situation over there. Look at us. So yummy. So as you can see, for breakfast, I switched in between the oatmeal breakfast and the egg scramble breakfast. I had that same lunch, the salmon, sweet potato, and salad nearly every single day. And then for dinners, instead of just doing whatever HelloFresh dinners were on the menu, we more so switched out for things that were higher in protein, or we just made sure it had a protein vegetable type of aspect to it. And then of course, those two fun drinks, my pomegranate mocktail. I would have that nearly every single night. I started that mocktail a couple days before transfer to kind of get the blood flowing and get the nutrients in my body. And then once we made the pineapple core tea, I would drink that every morning on an empty stomach while I was waiting for the coffee to heat up or just waiting for myself to wake up before I ate my breakfast. But the foundation for these meals just came from a little bit of research into fertility friendly foods or hormones hormone friendly foods and then I just made meals out of those suggested food items or nutrients. I've also gotten a few questions about other things that I did or didn't do after our transfer. And honestly, hi Bubba. Everyone say hello to Jack. Hello. But honestly, as it relates to exercise, I remember I didn't exercise, obviously transfer day, but I was right back at it the next day. I really just listened to my body. Maybe sometimes I would just walk on the treadmill at the gym, but I didn't stay away from any weightlifting, which is what I usually like to do. Weightlifting, strength training, that type of thing, which was different from the first transfer. I remember the first transfer, I was doing everything right when it came to exercise or when it came to other lifestyle types of changes besides food. Even though my clinic literally said, you can just go back to what you normally do. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't doing absolutely anything to mess up the process, which is totally valid. But that first transfer didn't work out. So this time around, I just listened to my body. I did what I was comfortable doing. I didn't wear socks every single day. I didn't really follow a lot of those wives tales or those whatever you call them, but we did did sacrifice a virgin on the third night of the full moon, didn't we? Oh, yeah, <laughs> just kidding guys. Oh, but I would say the main thing that we altered was the food and the drinks and the nutrients that I was putting into my body. But anyways, my friends, that is going to be it for today's vlog. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have absolutely any questions that I didn't cover in this video, you can leave them in the comments below. All of my socials are linked down below, so make sure to go follow me on there. I love you all so, so, so much, and I will catch you in the next one, my friends. I'll see you later. Bye.